Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey, everybody, it's us. Me, Lady Ada. With me is Mr. Lady Ada. It's but only us here. What's different is uh, this is our first show live, Ask an Engineer from the Adafruit factory, and we're not wearing masks. Because? We'll talk about that in a second. And I'm taking off my gloves oh. for now. And uh, it's a big day, big deal. Um, here's our vaccination cards. Let me just uh, cover up that information you're not supposed to see. Anyways, we put these on these 3D printed uh, multi-pass things. Okay. We're two weeks past our second dose. And the people who work on this floor uh, for our shift that overlap, they're past their second dose or they're one and done past 30 days. Mm -hmm. And it's been two weeks after that. So this is um, some of the things that you can expect to see in the world of normalcy, I guess it's called. We got all new graphics too. Yeah, okay, got all cool. new graphics. And uh, you know, give us a little bit of time to figure out some of this stuff because um, this is a new setup, a lot of new things. I adjusted the audio for the folks who uh, said we were clipping a little bit. And there's too much of us. There's just too much of too us. Too much, too much. But I did want to say thank you everyone for sticking with us for the last year. Mm. And also um, every single day and every single week you've seen how we've been running Adafruit and um, we've been managing to stay alive and keeping our team safe. Did we stop doing hardware? Yeah. No. Uh, no, we didn't just stop doing we hardware. Stopped, we didn't stop doing guides. We didn't stop yeah. doing tutorials. We didn't stop doing uh, activities. We didn't stop doing anything. We didn't stop doing any of that stuff. Okay. So um, we wanted to show that we've navigated this pretty well, and you can too. Yeah. So uh, we were and still here every single day, but we always had masks on because there wasn't vaccines. Right. And with us being able to get vaccinated, that means we can not wear a mask outside. It means when we're indoors and there's other people that are fully vaccinated, we don't have to wear a mask. Mm. It means that we can be on different shifts now because before without a vaccine, I'm on every floor at Adafruit talking to everyone. Um, if I got infectious, everyone is. Yeah. And we'd have to shut down everything. That'd so. Be good. What we did was we just had, uh, we have three separate floors and we've uh, been as safe as possible, didn't have any outbreaks, and now we're starting to see what the recovery looks like. So that's pretty much, you know, what we're doing for now. We'll continue to do the shows. Uh, once in a while we might need to do one uh, from home, um, but we're really excited about having our first Ask an Engineer in over a year on site. Next week is show and tell here, and then JP is doing um, Eight box and boxing. Eight box and boxing. That's right. um, so, without further ado, Let's as they out. say, on today's show. On tonight's show, we'll talk about the Adafruit Live series of shows, including show and tell. We've got time travel, help wanted, main New York City factory footage, 3D printing, INMPI, which is Sirion. Ooh, gothy. New products, top secret. We'll answer your questions. We do that over on Discord, adafruit.it slash Discord. All 29,000 of us, we just hit all 29,000 humans today. Thank you, humans. Join us over on Discord to ask your questions. All that and more on, you guessed it, dun, dun, dun. Ask an Engineer. Okay. Okay, so uh, first up, let's just go through some of the logistics and more of what it is to run the show. Yes. Uh, first up, our team thanks you. Uh, we are shipping safe and smart. Still wearing masks when uh, we need to, of course. A lot of us are getting vaccinated. Well, we already are. And here's uh, a photo from last year. It's one of our first. Pre-COVID. Uh, well, no, it's one of it's. Sorry, it was it was it's uh, it was one of the last photos we did before yeah. uh, COVID. Um, but thank you very much, and we're still doing a lot of neat things like our free offers. Um, Lady Ada, what do they get for free? Free. Free, 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 just like that. When they put pack. things in their cart. That's right. They $99. You get a half size Puma Proto breadboard. Great for making your project permanent after you've built the Moss Saddles breadboard. Next up, for $149 or more orders, we'll get you a free Stemma QT board. We have a whole bunch of options. Uh, we put in whatever we can get, basically. Um, some of these boards shown here are no longer available because yeah, I don't know if you've heard about the spark shortage. We have a good, good uh, range of about 15 to 20 different boards, and uh, we'll get that. you a different one each time you place an order if you make an account. $1.99 or more, or you get a free UPS ground shipping in the continental United States. That's this happy truck. And yeah. then $2.99 or more, you get a free Circuit Playground Express all-in-one development board that's wonderful for use with Circuit Python or Arduino. 
Coded or CS Discoveries, et cetera, et cetera. We love it because it's all in one and it's like 20 bucks. But you get it free. All right. And there's more. Wait. So tonight only. Yeah. And this is only for this hour. Just now. For all the folks that are watching live. Live. We have a special code that gets you 20% off. Now. And it's only until around 10 p.m. Web Eastern Ack. time. We we're back. We back. We back. We back. Oh, not Web Ack. We back. We back. Web Ack. <laughs> we back. <laughs> so 20% off. And uh, here's the thing. If you're already placing an order today, sorry. If you, if you just, it Todd, is. Todd, where does it end? It is. We where, can't go back in time, okay? <laughs> it is what it is. It's starting now for this hour. This is hour live. And then as soon as the show ends, live. we're ending it. So 20% off. In the Interford store you order. while you're watching it live because thank you so much everybody for being part of it. Also, there's you know live has to be special for some reasons. We have to do that. That's one of the okay, reasons. Okay, so we'll, maybe we'll do more codes. Maybe we'll do more. Codes. That's right. Okay, uh, we have a bunch of live shows that we do every single week. Oh, there's cool graphics. Yeah, you know nice. all sorts of things. Nature's healing. Great. Um, we have these live <laughs> shows that we do. Yeah. Um, and part of the Age of Fruit live series of shows is show and tell. And normally when we do show and tell, we're the host, um, unless it's JP or Don Pedro, uh, we write down all of the folks that are on it and then we talk about it. But we weren't on the show and tell last night and we but didn't write down it, all the stuff. Watch it. But what you can do is go. go to any of the video platforms like YouTube or Facebook or LinkedIn or there's another one, Periscope, Twitch. I think, Twitch. Twitch. Yeah. Um, you can, uh, go watch, you can watch that one. Half an hour of a good time, including Sherry. Who doesn't yeah. love Sherry? On I love Sunday, Sherry. we do Desk of Lady Ada, and we do it basically in two parts. This first part is what was on your desk this week. Okay. On my desk this week is I did some rotary coder fun. I also showed off a TFT breakout that I finally finished. And I got some prototypes. And this prototype, by the way, stay tuned. Uh, we're going to talk about these two prototypes in more detail, including maybe even showing one built and kind of working. That's pretty exciting. Oh, and some beautiful graphics. Yeah. You have some and cool pinout graphics. Yeah, and then we have uh, Adafruit and DigiKey. Where in the world is that part I need? The great search with DigiKey. And that's a great search that we do. Mm -hmm. And um, this week, here's what we're doing for the great search. The great search has turned into the great help people with part shortage issues. Um, you know, I know you, everyone's heard about this electronic part shortage. Well. Uh, folks come to us and they say, hey, you know, I'm looking for this part. I can't find it. I need an alternative that's in stock. Uh, so uh, we found the foot on Twitter. Some people were saying, like, hey, my project or project is delayed because of this missing component. We will go on to digikey.com and we'll um, find you an alternative. And uh, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard, but we show you some tips and tricks on how to do it. I'll say so far, every time somebody's like, oh, I can't find this chip, I'm always able to find something for them. Yeah. So. Uh, hit us up on uh, the social medias. Uh, you can post on Discord, Twitter, whatever. Just tag us and say, hey, for the next great search, can you find me an alternative for this out-of-stock part? And chances are, like, I'll be able to find you something. Okay. And then on Tuesdays, we have JP's product pick of the week. And one of the cool things about JP's show is, much like this particular show this week, we have a code. Uh, this is WeBack. This is 20% off for tonight. Only. Right now. This um, hour. Right. But um, the thing is, for JP Show, we do the same thing. So during JP Show, there is a uh, discount. You don't have to even put in a code. It's Instant. Ju just for that product. That one product. On the product page. About half off. Yeah. So let's uh, check out the clip from this week's JP product. It is the I2C QD Rotary Encoder Breakout with NeoPixel. You can plug this in over the Stemma QT cable, add a rotary encoder to it, so this plugs right into here. But by adding this board, you get a really convenient way to add a uh, rotary encoder to your project. So I've plugged this into one, two, three, and four of our rotary encoder breakouts. And then you can see we're getting an update on the encoder values of three of them, that's just what fit in the, in the code here over I2C. So these have up to eight of them chainable on a single I2C port because they have different uh, address jumpers on the bottom side of them. That's my product pick of the week. It is the I2C QD Rotary Encoder Stemma QT with NeoPixel breakout board. All right, and also, uh 
coming up soon. It's Thursday. JP's workshop. Mm -hmm. And on JP's workshop, we have a new segment that we do. This is called Circuit Python Parsec. And you can tune in to the one this week, or you can watch last week's right now and catch up with the latest Circuit Python Parsec. But that's not the Yeah, we're, we're working on that. Getting there. <laughs> The circuit, Python, Parsec. For the circuit Python Parsec today, what I wanted to do is show you a little bit about digital out. So uh, last week, in fact, we looked at digital input, which is using these general purpose input output pins as an input. We want to read buttons, we want to read switches, and that sort of thing. These pins are very versatile. That's why they're called GPIO. Uh, last week we used the I, now we're going to use the O, which is output. So these pins can be configured instead of reading uh, and, and waiting for voltage that says a switch has been closed. These can send out voltage or output voltage. So in this case, I'm going to use the output pins to light up some LEDs. So what you can see here is I have five of these GPIO pins. I'm going to set them as outputs, and they're going to write voltage out to these LEDs, which are then going through a set of resistors to ground so that we don't send too much current through them. And here you can see what the code does. I've got uh, importing times so that I can pause, importing board so I get a definition of all these pins, and then I have the digital I.O. import digital in out and import direction so that I can tell it to be an output instead of an input. Then I'm setting up a series of pins. So I'm using on this board I.O. 12, 11, 10, 9, and 8. That's this little set right here. Uh, and then I'm creating a list called LEDs, and I'm setting all of those LEDs in this one for loop here for pin and pins. I'm setting up the pins as digital out, uh, digital in out. I'm setting their direction to be output, and then I'm adding them to that list. So then what happens in this true loop, I'm going to go ahead and turn this on, and you can see uh, it is going to, for each uh, number zero through four, it's going to send current, send an output to an LED, and then move on to the next one, turn them off, and then start all over again. So that is how you can, inside of CircuitPython, set up digital output pins. And that is your CircuitPython Parsec, or should I say, CircuitPython Parsec. Sec, 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 sec. Okay, and then there's the show that we do on Friday's Deep Dive with Scott. Check that out. That's every Friday. Yes. Very exciting because we have just about finished our merge project, which is like the last three, four weeks. Scott has, and Dan and Jeff and the rest of the team and a lot of people testing out, have been merging two and a half years worth of MicroPython updates into CircuitPython. So for the core language updates uh, and bug fixes and implementation details, we're almost cut up. Um, so. You're going to see more Bluetooth stuff coming in. He's going to get back to Glider, which is uh, Scott's project to make uh, CircuitPython even more accessible to people. Okay, time travel. Let's look around the world of makers, hackers, artists, and engineers, and more. Um, first up, let's uh, mention what's going to happen next week. So next week, we're doing show and tell from here, massless. And then JP is doing the AdaBox Ada unboxing. So if you have an AdaBox, you can wait until then, or you can open it now, or whatever it is. By the way, we're almost done. We have like a one more day of shipping or two. So if you have, if you're like, I'm a subscriber, but I haven't got my shipping notice, wait till Friday. If you haven't gotten your shipping notice by Friday, then email support, and we'll figure yeah. something out. All right. Um, don't forget, uh, this was on the Show and Tell, the Maker Music Festival, May 15th and 16th. I posted this up on the blog, but please check it out. So um, a million years ago, we uh, made a Lego set for a, a, a woman in computing. Yeah. And uh, it was almost like 10 years ago. Oh, my cat. Uh, and uh, it was, Lego wasn't ready for this. The Lego community wasn't ready for this. We had a lot of votes. And then a roaming gang of Lord of the Rings and Batman <laughs> uh, male rights enthusiasts, I'm not making this up, came in and just outvoted us and then complained about the set that was the Lady Ada workshop. So anyways, it uh, didn't work out, um, but it's back. Uh, Women of Computing with someone else who made a bunch of different ones, and as soon as they get to 10,000, they'll probably make this set. So go for it. I think it was like 7,600 the last time I checked, so check that out. Go um, vote. We'll see how that goes. And uh, then another little milestone. Um, we just hit 250,000 people on Instagram. Thank you so much for, uh, it's at Adafruit, 
Um, but speaking of, it's, it's I wonder very, why. Why do you have so many subscribers? It's, it's very competitive there, and mm. we, we're not we're not paid influencers, and we have a verified account after a lot Definitely of wrangling. No diet tea here. Yes, we've uh, so we've earned it the hard way. Um, sure. But one of the things that we post all across our social media channels every single day, Monday through Friday, is lab notes with Colin, and we have um, ones on TikTok, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on YouTube. Um, Instagram, and uh, here's the blog, latest ones yeah. that uh, calls up to this week. Take us away. If magnetism seems mysterious, then electromagnetism must seem like a straight up magic trick. And it's an easy trick to perform with a nail, enameled wire, and a battery. Of course, you don't have to DIY. Manufactured electromagnets are compact, convenient, and ready to mount on a flat surface, which is helpful. Obviously, these would be very handy for robotic automation, as long as what you're trying to move is ferromagnetic. The ubiquitous AA and AAA batteries. Each provide about 1.5 volts. When you need more voltage, you connect them end to end in series. So a four cell case like this will supply six volts. Even larger alkaline cells, like these D batteries, still supply about 1.5 volts. So what's up with 9 volt batteries? What makes them able to supply 6 times as much as a regular alkaline battery? Well, one way to find out is by opening it very carefully. And that's about the simplest answer. A nine volt is really six very small 1.5 volt cells wired in series. Makes sense. It's like they're standing on each other's shoulders with a big trench coat on. As the name implies, a multimeter can measure all sorts of electronic signals and parts. Everyone should know how to use one. Start with measuring voltage from a battery. Make sure the black test lead is connected to the common ground jack and the red to the jack labeled V. Set the meter to the voltage setting. If there's multiple V modes, choose the one with straight and dotted lines. That's DC voltage. The other curvy line symbol is for AC voltage. To test a battery, touch the tip of the black lead to the battery's negative terminal and the red lead to the positive terminal. So, this 1.5 volt battery is supplying about 1.67 volts, which means it's nice and fresh. And this 1.5 volt cell can supply about 0.267 volts. Wow, that is impressively low. This one is done. Hobby servo motors come in a variety of sizes, and they're easily identifiable by their three pin connectors. Red or orange for power, brown or black for ground, and white or yellow for signal wire. Servos make it easy to add motion to a project without the need for complex motor drivers. They can rotate about 180 degrees. All the way left is considered zero degrees, middle is 90, and all the way right is 180 degrees. This one's powered by five volts DC, but it can get by with as little as four volts or as much as six. The servo's signal can be driven by short pulses from a microcontroller pin, sent 50 or 60 times a second. The width of the pulse determines the position the servo will rotate to. One millisecond is zero degrees, 1.5 milliseconds, 90 degrees, two milliseconds is 180 degrees. Many electronics boards with wireless capability, like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, come with these silver modules. So what secrets are hidden behind this shiny armor? To remove it, I'll try melting the board solder with a hot air gun. If we want to get in there even faster, we can always get a little more direct heat from our friend, Mini Hot Plate. Once the board fully heats up, we can gently remove the tin, being careful not to disturb the components underneath. Inside, we find the ESP8266 itself, a timing crystal, and an SPI flash chip to store the board's program. You can see where the tin was soldered to the ground plane, making it act like a Faraday cage, blocking outside radio frequencies. 
You can also see there is one gap in the cage perimeter. This is where the antenna trace went outside to talk to the world. Okay, a little bit more time travel. Um, maybe the folks can let us know uh, in the chats, I believe. I'm fixing some audio stuff. It's like yeah. building an airplane in the sky. No, I love it. You're like, you're like twisting knobs. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff listening. that's changed in a year. Yeah. Um, so while we're continuing to uh, work on that a little bit, here yes. is the next video. This is from Philby, and this is the difference between NeoPixels and Dot Stars, I believe. That's right. NeoPixel and Dot Star LEDs, they look about the same from here. In a previous video, I explained why you might want one versus the other. Today's reason has to do with photography and persistence of vision. And to explain what I mean, we can use a regular LED as a makeshift light sensor. Both types of pixels use pulse width modulation. They turn on and off very quickly to show different brightness levels. Depending where and when they were made, NeoPixels might pulse around 400 or 1200 times a second. While for dot stars, it's a spicy 4 to 20 kilohertz. The difference is quite noticeable if the LEDs are moving quickly. So a general rule of thumb is, if the LEDs are physically staying put, NeoPixels are fine. Long exposure photography, light painting, that's sort of an edge case. And for persistence of vision, where this all happens in your eyeballs, you definitely want dot stars. Okay, jobs.adafruit.com is uh, our way to help the economy recover. You can post up uh, the job that you want to get with yeah. your skills, or you can also post up, if you're a company, mm -hmm. what you're looking for. Uh, a couple jobs from the job board this week. Also, this is all free, Lady Aid and I moderate all of them so they're not scams or anything. Uh, this week is product design engineer, experience design specialist, and a senior electrical engineer. Some of these are remote, some of these are in person, so do check those out and apply. All right. It is Python on Hardware News. So we have our newsletter. We're almost up to 9,000 subscribers, so if you haven't already, please go to adafruitdaily.com. It's a completely separate site. The reason we did that is so no one could say, oh, you took my email address from your store and you started subscribing me. Yeah. No, we did not. So a few things. It was Mother's Day, so of course, what do people do on Mother's Day? Build electronics. They built electronics for moms, and so this is a very uh, cool flower pot with flowers that light up and this celebrates Mother's Day. Made with CircuitPython. Um, this is a Mother's Day project using Adafruit MagTag um, and has quotes from Glennon Doyle's book, Untamed. Um, PyCon is going on right now in the um, US. Mm. So virtual. it's a virtual one. Come um, Scott was there, Kenny was there. There's like an education summit. Yeah, the sprints are 16th to the 18th and then um, it's online. Uh, right now from the 12th to the 15th. Adafruit is a participating sponsor. KiCad is released, a um, bunch of new things in it. A lot of people in our community use that, so please check that out. Uh, you can watch the video on our various video channels. This is running CircuitPython tests and fixing bugs. Jepler did a good video with that. Uh, Anne did a interview with Embedded FM. I was gonna have that as a separate section on yes. our uh, news, but I forgot that it was also added here. So check it out, really good interview. You can find out all sorts of things. Uh, and uh, Anne has, uh, talks about work, tutorials, two books, eight different products, and then uh, being retired after a 30 year career uh, in engineering with the US Foreign Service. So check it out. She'd have really to tell good. you what you did, but then she'd have to kill you. Yeah, um, deep dive, mentioned that. And then you can just check out a variety of projects from around the web and more. Um, I mentioned the C Python update last week. They've moved things to Maine. And uh, one of the other cool things was the uh, read the docs for Python uh, is now responsive. Oh. And the neat story about this is a uh, person in the community contributed a pull request to make them responsive because she was pregnant and she was reading the documents on her phone and she said, well, it doesn't scale that well on a phone, so mm. I'll go fix that. Yeah. Cool story and exactly like what you want to hear in a community. It's like, oh, I saw something here. It is a way to fix it. Okay, uh, and then other things. Um, I wanted to show one video and then um, also this quote. So I'm going to go yeah. to this quote and then I'm going to um, play this video that Jepler did. So uh, in case you were wondering, how do we do things at Adafruit? Well. This translated tweet, I think, is uh, pretty accurate. Maybe there's a magic girl in Adafruit. 
CircuitPython can easily play wave music data. That's not all. If, once you have a Magic Girl, you can do all sorts of stuff. Magic Girl can also play MP3 files, by the way. Yeah. And then here's a video. I was thinking about the RGB matrix displays and realized that while I know that the protomatter code CircuitPython uses to draw them works by scanning the LEDs row by row, I didn't know what that looks like. Normally the matrix is scanned so quickly that our eyes can't see it. I think the target rate is 250 hertz. So if I wanted to see it in action, I need a high-speed camera. Or would I? I realized that I could just change the source code so that the scan was much slower. So far, we've been looking at the regular image, but with the press of a key, I can switch it to an ultra-low scan rate. Notice how the lines are drawn in pairs, and since the display has 16 lines on it, this makes the scan rate 1 8 Each line gets drawn several times with different values. This relates to the binary representation of the RGB pixel values. I think I prefer how it looks normally. Don't you? And that's our Python on Hardware news for the week. Thank you. OK, we are an open source hardware company. It's true. Lady Ada, we are. Um, and uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about before we move on yeah. to the guides. You have questions. Well, I do. I so, have so what's the latest with this um, because we're getting really close, I guess, to having a diagram for all of our boards. But this is a called it pretty, pretty, pretty pin. pins. Yeah. What's the latest with this? The latest is um, we've made pretty pin pinouts for all of our RP twenty forty boards, and um, RP twenty forty is particularly easy because every pin has a function. Like it, it's like every pin has a function. There isn't like a, a split mux for everything. Um, so we've got RP twenty forty all diagrammed up, and you got, have a couple examples here. This is the Itsy Bitsy. We also got the Cutie Pie, and I think they're actually in the guides. Yeah. And then the ESP32-S2 we also did today. Philby did an amazing job. Those are tougher because um, each pin is like a little bit different, um, and also the Funhouse and MagTag guides, all the pins are attached to hardware. Like, they're not broken out like a Itsy Bitsy or, or Feather. Uh, not yet. We will, we will be coming out with Itsy Bitsy and Feather versions of the boards eventually. And then next up, I'm going to do the NRF52840. And then, and we do them in groups by chip because we have to make the MUX table um, to auto generate these. So these are auto generated pinout pages. Um, so we're going to do it by chip. And then, of course, when we get to the SAMD21, that's when it's just going to be like a massive number of chips. But the goal here is to make these pretty pinout diagrams, but without almost any work on our part, like to really minimize the amount of effort because um, you want to minimize typos. You want to make it easy for us to update them and uh, maintain them. Because that's, that's the problem with a lot of pretty pinout diagrams is they're not very maintainable. OK. And let's get on to the guides. We have 2,474 guides, Lady Ada. Yeah. What's on the big board this week? Three guides this week. Uh, we've got a Funhouse 3D printed stand uh, from Noan Pedro if you want to make uh, a, a pretty 3D printed stand with a nice uh, yellow brick um, texture to it. Uh, I think they also show how to add textures. It's, you know, 3D printers are good enough that instead of just like generic 3D texture, you can have like a custom one. Um, John Park made a mail slot detector. This is a really common project. People want to know when there's mail in their mailbox. Um, so this detects when something passes through a brake beam. So different sensors are used for different things. Uh, in this case, a brake beam is an excellent way to measure when something goes between um, a slot. So this is a mail slot detector. And then um, we also got the guide for last week's new product, which is the I2C Q2 rotary encoder. Uh, big ups to uh, CircuitPython a community member who got to adding the CircuitPython example before I did. Uh, so we've got Arduino and CircuitPython code for that. It's a very easy way to add up to eight encoders over I2C to your CircuitPython or Python board. Okie dokie. Some Made in New York City factory footage. Here we go. Take it away, factory. And, we're in uh, you. Yeah, we're actually. Uh, here right now. Mm. Not a green screen. If if I tipped over, I wouldn't. Yeah. I would fall. There were so many really good like zoom backgrounds, uh, and I guess we could have done, done that. But, I mean, but um, it's not real, so uh, we're really here. Okay.
And it wouldn't be Adafruit Factory footage unless you could see Disney building the building across the street from Adafruit. On a beautiful day. Yeah. Very sunny. All right, 3D printing, Noah and Pedro. Printing up a bunch of stuff. This week we've got two videos. We have a new trellis video and a gear speed up. Take it away, Noah and Pedro. Hey, what's up guys? In this project, we're building a color matching game using the Adafruit Neo Trellis and the Feather M0 Express. The upgraded Adafruit Neo Trellis features 16 NeoPixel LEDs. The Seesaw i 2 c chip allows you to tile up to 32 boards. Parts used to build this project are listed in the guide linked in the description of this video. We designed and 3D printed an enclosure to house all of the components. The files are available to download and modify. You can find our CAD parts library on our GitHub repo. The Adafruit Feather M0 features CircuitPython and can be programmed via USB. It works like a USB flash drive, allowing you to quickly modify your code and take it with you. So there's no need to install software, all you need is a text editor. To build this project and learn how to get started, head on over to the Adafruit Learning site. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for more DIY projects from Adafruit. Pedro every Wednesday, learn how to make all the stuff and more. 3D Hangouts. Um, 
So before we go on to the next segment, don't forget, this code is only going to be, as, 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 when we're live, this is when this code works. When we're not live, this code's not going to work. So put it in your cart now, check out. Like 20, if it isn't Wednesday, if this 8, isn't live, 30 p.m. It, Eastern time right now, yeah. May 2nd, 12th, then it's not live. So you have like 20 minutes before. Yeah. All right, so okay. let's go to everyone's favorite segment. on Digikey and Adafruit bring you on MPI every single week. This week is from Sensirion, Lady Ada. Yes. What is Did the- Did you know that they're the sensor company? Uh, well, I do now. Yeah. Um, what is the Ion MPI this week? And I, uh, MPI stands for New Product Introduction. That's right. So what is it this week? This is a very new product. Uh, it's so new, Digikey hasn't even featured it on their Slash It's page. so new, it's not out of stock yet. It's a well, global shortage. it's a little out of stock. Oh. It's not completely out of stock. Right. Uh, did you buy some before we did this? Maybe. Okay, um, okay. so <laughs> this week's I am NPI is the SCD40 and SCD41. These are adorable little uh, sensors from Sensirion, and these are true CO2 sensors. Um, Sensirion makes uh, some eCO2 sensors that are like effective CO2, um, which they do by measuring a volatile organic compounds and they kind of like guess what the CO2 level is. But this is a true CO2 sensor. It's actually measuring parts per million of uh, carbon dioxide in the air. Uh, you may be familiar because people a lot of times talk about uh, carbon dioxide, you know, on the planet, it, it, you know, it's, a, it's considered a greenhouse gas. Um, and usually people are only measuring carbon dioxide for maybe like, you know, like, oh, you're a ventilation engineer or you're doing like outdoor environmental science, but uh, they have really good timing because right now people really want CO2 sensors. We use them. Um, why? Because, um, you know, in the last year or so, a lot of um, epidemiologists and scientists, and in this case, a mechanical engineering professor said, hey, you know, for diseases that are passed by airborne transmission, um, you can use CO2 as a way of determining how much um, air circulation you have because uh, as you probably learned in grade school um, humans uh, like to take in oxygen out of the air and they expel carbon dioxide so over time if you have a closed house or, or room um, and you have a lot of humans in it like a workplace or a school you're going to see the co2 rise 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 um, now we, we don't it, it's best to have low CO2, but humans, are, as long as it's less than a thousand, you know, your, your body is totally fine with it. We can, we can handle that. Um, but you can, instead of just using it as a gauge of, of health, uh, like CO2 level for or breathability, um, outside is 400 ppm. And so as long as you keep the indoor at um, 600 or less, and here's a paper that was uh, uh, written that is referred to by the article I just point, uh, posted to. Um, this is for a different disease. This is for um, tuberculosis. Uh, but they noted that they could stop the transmission as long as the CO2 was less than 600. Not because the CO2 had anything to do with TB, but because if you had low CO2, that means that there was enough air movement um, that air wasn't sitting around and, and people were bumping into these particles because the air was, was being evacuated out of the room and replaced with fresh air. Uh, so Sensirion, um, this is not their first rodeo when it comes to uh, CO2. They've had the, CO, the SCD30 for quite a while, uh, which you might, this looks very familiar. That's because we have a breakout for it. So this is a true CO2 sensor that uses NDIR um, IR light to determine um, IR so determine the CO2 parts per million. Um, it's a great sensor. One of our most popular guides that I think was just featured on Make Even uh, is uh, Carter's um, Pi Portal, uh, sorry, Matrix Portal CO2 um, like room detector, which is very simple and just says like a four little word like good, bad, worn. Um, the number, which is the CO2 level, in this case it's 782 parts per million, and then like a happy face or a frowny face. Uh, so very simple sensor. Um, but one thing that's you know not so awesome about the sensor is it's kind of big, and it's, it's through-hole soldering, so it's not easy to embed in small electronics, um, and it's not easy to automate production of it. Uh, so what's really cool is here's this diagram showing the size difference of the SCD40 versus the earlier SCD30. And you can see it's, I think they said it's seven times smaller uh, and, and all the way compact on every size. And it's surface mount pick and placeable, which is wonderful. 
Um, so there's two versions of it. Oh, it's, it's an I Score C sensor, so it's very easy to use. Um, and there's two versions. There's the SCD20, uh, sorry, the SCD40, which goes from 400 to 2,000 ppm. And then there's the SCD41, and it's a higher accuracy, 400 to 5,000 ppm. Now, use whichever works best, but <coughs> for indoor, you know, CO2 measurement just for like humans, y you don't really need to know if it's over 2,000, because if it's over 2,000, that's, that's too high, and you should tell them like lower it until it's less. Like you don't really care if it's 3,000 or 4,000, like it's all bad after 2,000. Um, so 400 to 2,000 is plenty. Um, but for some scientific purposes, um, a single shot mode is probably good for low power usage. The SCD41, it's gonna be a little more expensive. Um, but has uh, a higher range. So, you know, pick and choose, but they're the same package so you can uh, hot swap whichever one you like. Uh, it's also available in R1 and R2. So there's four total part numbers. R1 is uh, 60 sensors per reel and R2 is a smaller reel and R2 is a larger reel, probably like a, you know, just the reel size is a di is different uh, diameter. Uh, they also have a sensor bridge and a sensor breakout available, which we'll chat about in a minute. Um, and here's something I thought was just so cool. So Sensirion already wrote uh, libraries for all these different platforms. And this is really wonderful because one of the things that makes me so bummed out is when a company is like, yeah, we wrote a driver, but it's only for our specific microcontroller, or only for the compiler, like it's for a closed source compiler, closed source tool chain, you know, an ID that's just Windows only, and it's like very, very tied to the chip that, you know, we sell. It's like. We only have code for the MSP430, and like you can't use it with anything else. But what's really nice about Sincerion is they wrote code for Raspberry Pi, um, I squared C, embedded C, and Arduino, as well as Make Code. So it's like you could even have students build projects with this and use it with Make Code with drag and drop programming, which I think is super awesome. Yeah. Um, so I will say, at the time of this writing, there's no actual sensors in stock as they are sold out. It wasn't just me, by the way. Other people bought them too. However, I did notice the, the lead time for getting more is about a month, so you could definitely get them on back order. Um, but what I did see was in stock was this dev kit. Um, so it's a little breakout board with like a JSTPH. It's probably Grove compatible and there's also breakouts. And so yeah, this is actually pretty good because it's not much more expensive than just the sensor and you can plug and play it um, with a Raspberry Pi or, or Arduino because it comes with headers and everything. Um, they even have a video showing it, and then, of course, just run that code. It's just I2C, so you connect up power, ground, clock, and data. Um, one of the um, things that they mentioned they wanted me to make sure people knew is that the power supply, you want to make sure it's a nice, quiet power supply. So if you're running this off of a Raspberry Pi, use, like, the 3-volt supply, not the 5-volt supply, because it's a little bit uh, less noisy, because the noise does affect um, the reading. It's available on DigiKey. That's right. It's in stock. So search for SCD41 sensor, uh, and this is in stock right now. So you can go and pick it up, and it will ship today or tomorrow. Yeah, here's a short URL. Short it's URL. There, and then there's the... Yeah, it's backwards. There's the... Uh, <laughs> there's what you look for. There. But you can just type in SCD41. And then if you want the, just the sensors itself, search for SCD40 or SCD41, and you can sign up or back order. And we have a video. A video, and then when you come back, I'm going to show on the overhead the demo. Monitoring CO2 can increase your cognitive performance, reduce the risk for viral infection, and make our building more energy efficient. This is why Sensigeron developed a miniaturized CO2 sensor with the mission to break the size barrier for CO2 sensors. Hi, my name is Marco, and I am very excited to present the SCD 4X evaluation kit and how it can be used to easily evaluate our revolutionary CO2 sensor. Compared to its predecessor, the SCD 4X is seven times smaller. It is SMD, thus allowing for cost-effective assembly. It allows for adjustable power consumption and offers many more great features. Now, this technological breakthrough is enabled through Sincerion's patented PA Sense technology that is based on the. Okay, so okay. you want to show this off? I do. So, this is the earlier SCD30, and this is it, you know, mounted onto this, uh, uh, this Pi Portal project, which is uh, super cool. And then um, this is. Hold on, let me turn it upside down gently. Thank you for being patient, my new demo setup. So this is a Feather M4, and I just really loaded up 
Uh, oh, it says SCD30. It should say 40. Sorry about that. You can tell I took my old demo and updated it for the uh, SCD40. And this is a little breakout that I made, but the one that they sell is almost the same. And you can see how small that sensor is. This is a Teflon cover just to protect it. Um, and you can decan if you want inside. There's like a chip and, and the, the sensing element. Um, so you can see inside right now, it's about 600 ppm. That's normal um, for indoors. And then if I breathe on it, um, measurements get taken about every five seconds. Uh, so you'll see the CO2 uh, slowly rise up as the CO2 gets absorbed in. So there you go. So that's, that's normal. So as you breathe on it, you, know, you have a lot of CO2 in your lungs. Um, and then over the next minute or two, this will slowly drift down. Another thing is, by the way, it has a built-in humidity and temperature sensor as well, used to compensate the sensor, but it means that you can, you know, this very small uh, little box can be used for um, all sorts of environmental sensing projects because it does kind of everything for you. So that's the SCD40. All right, and that's this week's Ion MPI. Hi, on MPI. Okay, let's uh, do new products. But before we do new products, don't, don't forget, forget 20% off just for this hour. Oh, that code. Code it'll, comes back. If we're still live after 9, it'll be okay, but we we'll usually get out of here. Yeah. Or we will be getting out of here by 9.15. All right. So let's do uh, new products. Ready? Okay, let's do it. New, 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 we are back. New, 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 we are back. Back, back, back. We are back for new. All right. <laughs> what? Good song. Okay. Yeah. Out. Okay, uh, this is back in stock. Like it was coming soon. It's now available now. These are the FPC cables that are 25 centimeters long, and they're used with um, our little green FPC to 2 by 20 IDC adapters. Um, you plug these on the end, and you can make custom um, Raspberry Pi extension cables or GPIO cables of like any you know complexity. Uh, and the flex cable is much thinner than normal IDC cables, so they're great for making like twisty, turny cable contraptions with uh, Raspberry Pis and hats. Works with any Raspberry Pi with a 2x20 header. So those are in stock. All right, next up. OK, next up we've got some more um, uh, Pico Blade connectors. Uh, we now have 5-pin and 6-pin. Uh, these are pigtail pairs. So one is a socket connector, one's a plug connector. You plug them together. Um, these are really compact and, and, and thin. So if you're looking for, um, you know, a, a very compact, much more compact than JST SH or XH cables. Um, these I think are one millimeter pitch, so maybe I'll show them real fast on the overhead to show just how small they are in case people don't know how, how big a quarter is. So you can see here, they're, they're really small. And this is um, six pins and uh, these snap together very nicely. Hold on, let's make sure I, I snap them the right way. Okay, this, they go this way, yeah. So they snap in together, so they, they're nice and solid. Um, and the cables are nice and flexy, they're about 10 centimeters each. Uh, so together it's about 20 centimeters total. Um, we've got them in other pins as well, like two, three, four, but now we've added five and six. All right, next up. Okay, we've got two new Pico boards, and I gotta look at these, because they're this confusing. This is the ESP32 Pico. Uh, with USB-C. So we've already carried a board that's like almost identical to this, except with a micro B. Well now, for USB-C fans, we've got the USB-C version. Uh, so it's got uh, you know, a lovely layout, the USB-C, um, a nice uh, chunky antenna. It's got l l ultra low power. Um, here's the pinout diagram for it. USB-C, yeah. teeny pico. Uh, people really like these. These are from Untitled Maker. Um, they're wonderful if you are an ESP32 fan because they're like uh, they're very compact. Unexpected maker is in the chat too. Well, they can answer yeah. any of your questions, <laughs> and maybe you know they also have very nice uh, pinout diagrams. Very nice. Yeah. Um, okay. We also have wait. This is the ESP32 S2. Yeah. Sorry. They look nearly identical. Similar. Very similar. So the ESP32 S2. Um, it runs CircuitPython, and this is the new version of the um, ESP32 processor. It's single core, not dual core, even though there's like a two in the name. However, it does have native USB, so that's why you'll notice that there is, while there's a reset and boot button, there's no CP2104 like there was on the previous one. Um, that's because it has a native USB and a native USB bootloader, so you can use it with um, Arduino. Uh, they recently updated the IDE um, board support package 2.0.0. 
which has added support, much better support for ESP32 S2. And of course, CircuitPython has great support as well. There's another pinout. Another pinout diagram. So I, I'm pretty sure these have like compatible pinouts, but again, Untitled Maker, Untitled Unexpected Maker will um, be able to answer your detailed questions. Right. And also check out their site, which has tutorials and more. Next up. Ooh, clicky keys. So we put in the store kale keys, and there's four common colors. Now there's like, okay, I get it, keyboard people. There's like five bazillion types of keys, but really there's only four that people want. There's um, white, which is clicky. There's brown, which has like a little tactile bump, and there's red, which is linear, and then there's black, which is like a stiffer linear. And um, the thing is, it's hard to, you know, you can describe them and be like, it's 60 gram force. People are like, what does that really mean? It can't be, this can't be explained. It, it can be, be explained. It must, it must it be must, shown. It must be clickied. So um, this is a little tester, and it comes with a lot of nice plastic uh, cutout, and uh, it has one of each key. Now, you can always just buy the keys, but maybe you're like, look, I, you know, I want to I wanna just press them. So it has the red one, the clicky white one, this is the tactile brown one, and then like the stiffer uh, linear one with the black stem. And um, you, know, you, can, you can pop these caps off and replace them with your, your favorite caps, like kitty caps, or if you have like a, a DSA cap. But it's just meant for you to test them. It's a little tester. So that's it. If you're wondering, which one should I get? If you pick up one of these, you'll always be able to uh, get a good feel for it. I, know. I thought this was handy. When I was buying Kale switches, I got one of these to start to get a feel for them. All right, and that brings us to the uh, uh, almost the star. Not of the, the star, show. but getting close. Getting close. What is this? Ah, oh, I just love these. What is okay, this? This is a metal aluminum keycap with silicone translucent toe beans. I mean, this was basically made for me because <laughs> I love black cats. And I love it when my cats have translucent body parts. No, I don't know. It's, right. it's good for Neo keys. So um, let me really get in close on the overhead to show it off. I gotta use this overhead. Okay, so here's, a, it's a, a Cherry MX compatible uh, keycap. So it's got the little X on it. And um, this is like a translucent material. And then this is uh, metal. So it's a, this is a little bit cold, but it's like a, um, and it's painted black, and then these are like silicone toe beans, so they feel they feel like they're little cat toes, and you just kind of want to put your fingers in between. That's right. Them. I don't know. I don't know. I got a problem. So you put them on um, your keycaps, and uh, if you have Neo keys, like if you have one of our um, boards that has a Neo pixel underneath it, you will notice that the um, RGB LEDs shine through. Now, I will say, you're probably wondering, well, why do the toes light up and not the pads. Well, that's because on most keys, you know, the stem doesn't glow, it's, it's like from the edge. And so usually that's why you'll see like um, translucent keycaps have um, the, the printing is on the top or the bottom because, you know, you can, you can flip this around so it's the pad that's lit and not the toes, but you can't get both. So I'm explaining, it's like, it's not broken, it's just these are how keycaps work. So you decide. Do you want glowy beans or you want glowy pads? Uh, you know, I can't choose for you. Look deep into your soul and you decide. However, um, these are adorable and uh, they work with any Cherry MX compatible switches. Yeah. They're not cheap, but it's 20% off right now. That's right. Just briefly. Okay, next And they're up, cheaper than other sites. The stars of the show tonight, besides you, Lady, our community, our team, and all of our customers. First up. Trankies. Twinkies, my little pocket friend. So you think that this little armadillo, when when you when you kick him, he like emits little keycaps? Like what is this? Bing bing. <laughs> like, bing bing. Like a like a Super Mario coin bing, bing. block. Um, okay, so this is the so we've been working on trickies for a bit. Um, I just wanted to have some. You know, people were um, making little like cutie pie based um, single key or single rotary encoder. Like Toddbot was making a bunch of these, and I saw some other people doing these, um, making like one key USB key connectors, and I was like, that's kind of a cute idea. So this is a little bit of a mix of, it's, it's a USB key and a, a, trink, um, a trinky, right? Or sorry, a uh, trinket, or like our SAMD21 board. And it's also kind of a little bit similar to um, a DigiSpark, right? Which is this USB A breakout board. So it's a USB A connector, and it just has like the minimum stuff to run Arduino or CircuitPython with a SAMD chip on it, which is the same as the Trinket chip. It's a um, SAMD21 E18 
Cortex M0 running at 48 megahertz with 32K of RAM, 256K of flash. So it's a super overpowered Arduino or like kind of like the bare minimum circuit Python you need to do this. There's capacitive touch on the end. There's a NeoPixel, that's what the Neo stands for. And then there's a solder spot for a single MX compatible key. It's not a socket, you have to solder the key in because the key will just like flop right out. So you have to solder it in. And at the end, there's a little like slot for you can like tie it to something. And there's a um, capacitive touchpad. So um, I just, you, I'll just show the same overhead that I just did. I have it with um, this adorable uh, kitty keycap, although I can, I can replace it with uh, one of these DSA caps if you want something a little bit more less kitty. Um, so it's just like one, one key. You can use a, a super low profile KL Chaco key, um, but I just note that we don't stock those. But anything that's MX compatible, you know, with the big center dot and then the two holes you solder in, you get a reset button and the Neo key, uh, Neo Pixel. And then you could program it to be anything. And in CircuitPython, we have a bunch of example code. Arduino, we also have example code. Um, you want it just to be like a mute button. You want it to like auto launch something. You want it to just type out some emojis. Whatever you want. It's a, maybe you have an old MacBook and you want the escape key back on your computer. Add a single key. Okay, next up. With Neo key. More trinkies. Okay, another trinky. This is rotary trinky. Hi, rotary trinky. So rotary trinky, as you might imagine, is a USB key with a rotary encoder on it. Uh, and there's a little RGB LED. The RGB LED points down, by the way. The, it, the encoder itself is not one of the RGB encoders for, for reasons. Um, so it's, again, USB-A. It's got a SAMD21 on the bottom, crammed all the parts you need, reset button, capacitive touchpad on the end, rotary encoder with a switch, uh, runs Arduino or CircuitPython. So I'll show that as well. So this is, uh, I have a hat on it, and then you do have to solder in the rotary encoder. We might offer a version with the rotary encoder soldered in, but I think there's some variations in rotary encoders, so we, we're not doing it yet. You can just pick up an encoder, and you can see the RGB LED on the bottom here uh, shines down, and you can uh, twist to your heart's content, and we program it however you like. Right now, I'm just, I'm just doing a little demo that does a rainbow swirl because it's very easy to, to show off. There's also a tactile button, so you can click. So a common thing is like a volume up and down knob or like a Microsoft dial emulator. Um, I actually turned this into a very handy thing for me, which is a YouTube play pause and then um, frame advance or backtrack. So you can go frame by frame through a video online because I was like trying to get some screen captures. Um, but whatever you want, like uh, rotary encoders are a lovely user interface device and so you can just plug it into your USB-A port and add it and reprogram it, customize it in Arduino or CircuitPython. And that's new products. Yay. New, 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 new. Okay, don't forget, um, only now, um, use this code WEBACK, get 20% off. All right, let's uh, do some top secret, Lady Ada. Okay. So if you start putting your questions in Discord, we'll get to them. But we do have some top secrets first. Mm. Uh, I'm going to show a couple videos, and then we're going to talk, talk about some of the things that we've been up to. So take it away. Past us. Past us. OK, Lady Ada, what is this? Uh, I've been playing around with lots of interface circuits, like rotary encoders. I like these. They do rotate all the way around. And if you remember old iPods, they also had a rotary wheel. Um, that clicked around, and that's how you would select songs. So this is actually from Zippy. It's, it's not from a real iPod. It's just very similar to it. And you can see as I rotate the wheel, it's being read by this Feather M4, and it's uh, making the NeoPixel go around. And then when I press the Up button, you see the red LED on the top turns on. This is the left button, the right button, the bottom button, and the middle button, which turns all the LEDs on. And then if you look at the computer, uh, you see it's reading the encoder and keeping track of the direction. So this little breakout I made works just fine. So you'll be able to use it on a breadboard. There you go. All right, Lady what is this? Hey, I built a tester for uh, the Seesaw rotary encoder. So this is an i 2 c to rotary uh, encoder converter manager that uses a SAMD09. And I'm using uh, this Metro Express to run the SWD DAP code that will program in this chip. So when I put it down here and I press the button, it will program it, and then that's how I know it's working. It's all rainbowy. 
And then when we go over here, uh, this is what it looks like when it's fully assembled as a rotary encoder, uh, and it's being driven by a, a Metro Mini. And then um, the commands to control the rotary encoder and the NeoPixel um, are all done over I2C, so you can see a stomach UT cable. And uh, you can even see there's a little interrupt pin over here that whenever I twist it, it goes high and low. So that's uh, me just testing out this new hardware that's coming to the Adafruit shop soon. Hey, I'm making a NeoKey Trinky tester using a Teensy 3.6 and our Teensy brains. When I press this button, it goes through the whole procedure, programming, checking the USB, and locking the chip. It finishes in about three seconds. And then I've got a beautiful NeoKey Trinky. And then what you do is um, people can pick what Cherry MX key they want to solder onto it. And then uh, you can have like a beautiful glowing keycap that does thing. In this case, it's just doing a pause consumer control, but it's reprogrammable in Arduino or CircuitPython thanks to SAMD21 E18 on the bottom there and the reverse NeoPixel. So very cool, very fast, very easy. Going to be in the store real soon. NeoKey, Trinky, your best friend from Mechanical Keyboards. Okay, and then I uh, wanted mm. you to talk about what is this thing? Oh, this is my layout for the rotary encoder uh, tester. I use a Metro M0 to program the SAMD09 on the rotary encoder. So this is like an all in one tester. All right, and then this we talked about on Desk of Lady, mm. but this is a big deal. TB2040. Yeah, this is an Arduino uh, Pro Micro shaped board, but it runs a RP2040, and we posted everything up on our blog, but... Take uh, a look, folks, and, and I'm going to send out these prototypes soon, so let me know if there's something yeah. I messed up. If you, you do keebs, if you do keebs, you're going to like this, because it's the only replacement that's out there that's an RP2040. Yes. And it'll be CircuitPython. And we have a bunch of updates to CircuitPython. We'll make this the and best check out keyboard. those D-plus and D-minus pins. Yes. For the two people who are wanting this. <laughs> That's top secret. OK. So we're going to do questions. Let's do some um, questions. You want to go to adafruit.it slash discord, join all 29,000 of us. Hit me up. And we're going to start doing the questions. Yes. Um, I will get to those that I have lined up already. Yes. Oops. I know it's top secret. Sorry. We just did top secret. Yeah. You know. What? I just clicked the wrong button. Yeah, but look, they, you just said questions. Look, it's been a year. Okay. Um, I have no problem with it. Yeah, here we go. They got a deal. I got them lined up. Yeah. First question. Yeah. Uh, thoughts on a future Pi portal with the yet released zippy scroll wheel? I'll tell you, this, those scroll wheels are, are not cheap. Um, so I might DIY, some, you know, we might do something. But th that particular wheel, like, it's, it's very cool, but it's very, it's kind of more expensive than the rest of the pipe portal parts. OK. For these cables, what was the AWG, do you recall? Um, I'm going to read the value off of it. Is it on the product page? It might be. I think it's on the product page, but I can also just read it off of here. It says 28. 28. There you go. Okay, so you got it. Okay, next up. Uh, if you solder on the back of the tester, do you get a four button keyboard? And that was for this. Um, y you could. Uh, there's no PCB there. It's just a plastic thing holding it. But yeah, you could you know, free wire them. Yeah, okay. Next up. Um, might NeoKey be your smallest microcontroller board yet? I think Neoki, yeah, it's, is, is pretty small. No, you know, the smallest one that we've ever done was the um, cufflinks, the cufflink and necklace board. That is a retro one. That's small. The I cufflinks a long time ago. Um, next up, uh, is there a stem trinky yet? There is. I can even show it on the overhead because oh. I just put it together. So it looks like this. It's an actually RP2040. The reason it's an RP2040 and not a SAMD is because I wanted to be able to fit every possible, like our entire library bundle on it. So you need to have um, a ton of flash and RAM to be able to, to do that. And then um, this base is the same physical size as like 90% of our Stemma QT boards. And so you could mechanically attach it 
and to make a little like a little happy friend. It's like, hi, this is an all-in-one trinky okay. QT thing. Um, how many ongoing projects do you have and how do you organize your time in regards to said projects? Lots and whenever I can get parts and I just do one a week, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would say you know, it's a constant. Are you, are you not satisfied with the product output? No, no, no I don't think I don't think anyone would say that. I think they're like, how are you getting? How are you doing You're this? We're pushing the pit. I think sometimes you have to have projects rebel against each other. Like sometimes there's delays with one thing, so always yeah. have something that you can keep. Yeah. Moving back and forth to, to. Oh wait, you know, I forgot to show off my my. Well, we'll show it right before we are done. Yeah, sure. And one more. Um, Pipe Portal 2040. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Uh, no question, just happy to see you back in the office. Yeah, and without a mask because we got vaccinated. Vaxxed. So, you know, trying to set a good example of when and where and how normalcy in the ways that we want um, and going forward in a better way uh, will be in our lives again. Yeah. So, uh, next up, I need a uh, Feather RP2040 and idea when they be back in stock. I don't see why they wouldn't come into stock soon. We, we have chips. I think we're eating on PCBs. So sign up. I, there's, we're, there's, there's no inability for us to get chips for that board. So okay. I think we'll have more soon. All right. Uh, question for the show. Uh, the good friends at DigiKey have started PCB printing. Several microcontrollers like the Cutie Pie have been castellated, have castellated pads making the PCB friendly. Any plans to make a starter print of PCBs or other prints could just be helping with the feather layout being placed on the PCB for soldering. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, we don't have um, pinouts, we, we do in fritzing, um, but maybe we'll show how to use fritzing to send boards to um, DK Red. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Um, question was only a one a week project. It seems like you're juggling 10 a week. I know, I think we're, we're working on, I'm working about 10 a week, but I only yeah. release, like this week, I released the two trinkies, which is weird. Usually I don't release two a week, but in general, it's one a week release. That's 50 ish products a week, uh, a year. Yeah. Uh, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes extra, and sometimes they don't do one. So, all right, okay. let's uh, let's show this other okay, top secret. So this See, is, I knew there was a reason I played the top secret yeah, thing twice. Yeah, there's a double secret. Ah. So this is I just put this together right before the show because we were here and I could use the oven because my little hot plate's a little too small. So this is uh, a demo. This is a um, I think the overhead does not like that. Does the not lights. like the LEDs. So this is a rotary encoder. This is going to be an OLED, which I did not get working yet, but it's fine. So this is a little macro pad with an RP2040 on the back and then NeoPixels and key switch plugins. So you can, you can plug in uh, socketed. This, this is, uh, these are socketed switches, so you can plug in any uh, Cherry MX keys into them. And I'm just doing, this is my little demo test where as I rotate the encoder, it makes the colors uh, cycle. So that's my demo. And then I did this fun thing where the boot zero pin is connected to the rotary encoder, so you press this down while you hit reset to, to put it to bootloader mode. But so it'll be like a really cool macro pad with uh, an OLED or a TFT. I have to chat with Mr. Lee Data which one he prefers. Yeah, so that was part two of Top Secret. Uh, you linked to a project with a flashlight powered by the heat of a user's hand. Any chance of doing a project like that? I tried to look it up on DigiKey, but it looked like the parts cost at least $30. Yeah, it, there's not so cheap. <laughs> The shaky ones are, are a lot easier. There's, there's DIY products where you can make the shaky ones. Uh, you just need a coil of wire and a magnet, and you can make a, a flashlight that's like hand chargeable. All right. Yeah, everyone likes the multipass. Uh, can I use the LED light above my workbench without RF interference to my sensitive circuits? Sorry, what was the question? They want uh, work uh, Can you use an LED light above your workbench? Um, and will it affect sensitive yeah, electronics? Yeah, you're probably good. I mean, lights are, they are very annoying emitters. Um, I don't know the answer other than maybe you could put like copper mesh over it to, to reduce the, the RF emission. Okay. You know, it'll, it'll, it'll let the light through, but it won't affect the RF. Uh, can you get translucent keycaps uh, with home row bumps? That's a good question. I don't know of any, but I'll look. But that's a good point for accessibility. It would be good to have yeah. one to little bumps in them. Okay, and I think those are the questions. Yay, thank you, everybody. All right. And thank you, Phil, for wrapping up. Yeah, that's our show for this week. Thank you uh, so much, everybody. Special we did. thanks to Takara, who's in the chat. Uh, thanks for. Um, uh, basically, if we were to try to get everything perfect uh, for like live broadcasts, we'd never do it. No. And so we were down on the wire, and this is the first possible week that we've been past the Literally. fully vaccinated status. 
um, we're gonna uh, wear our masks as we go yes. uh, outside. outside, but then as soon as we get outside again, we're gonna take our masks off. It's on and off all day. Yeah, that's fine. And that's, that's, cool. that's what you want it to be. Yes. You want to see that there's a time and place, and if everyone, um, yes, we could have got here sooner, if everyone would have worn a mask and everything, you know. Now the most important thing is if you're gonna get vaccinated, please do it um, because it just means you can keep other people safe and we can all do a lot more stuff together. Uh, we're, we're, the proof is in the pudding. Um, look at those shows for the last year. You could see everything we did and everything we couldn't do. We, show kept going on, um, but here we are. Glad to be back. Thanks for um, going through, uh, be adjusting a bunch of audio settings. There's all sorts of stuff that goes on in a factory. And, and don't then, forget, in exchange for that, you get 20% off. Yeah. I mean, you get Use ca the code cash back. money discounts. We back. And, uh, or web act. Uh, that is the show tonight. Thanks, this everybody. Was an Adafruit production. Thank you so much. Bam. Here is Bam. your moment of Zener.